Hey, what's going on, good people? Welcome to Russ Can't Fly. Oh man, this IFR stuff is killing me! Perfect. So before I get started, it's a beautiful day here in Rittenhouse Square Park. Um, haven't been down here in a long time, but like I've been saying in a lot of my previous videos, I'm back in the office. And so because of the fact that I'm back in the office, I get to come down here at Rittenhouse and eat lunch and hang out and all that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm doing today. And I've figured, eh, you know, better place than any to film this video. I know folks are wondering, where am I in my IFR training? I know I haven't talked about it, but you've been seeing some of those training flights, even though they're by myself. A lot of the things in terms of getting flight following, um, me making myself task saturated in some of my flights, especially that last one I did when I was leaving from uh, Harrisburg International. That was one of those flights where I, I was almost like on an IFR flight plan. I had to get clearance. I had to worry about wake turbulence because there was this big giant military aircraft taking off. And um, I had a departure frequency that I had to pick up while I was in the air, while I was worrying about wake turbulence. I had to contact departure. And then of course I did my own personal diversion. So uh, those were all the things that I'm doing to prepare for being on an instrument flight plan. And like I said, I purposely diverted for fuel. Uh, not that it didn't hurt that I got the fuel, uh, but it wasn't a fuel emergency by any stretch of the imagination. Although if it would have been one, I would have declared an emergency because look, you know, at the end of the day, better safe than sorry, right? But no, I didn't have a fuel emergency situation. I just wanted to see if I could kind of pull this off while talking to Philly Approach. The reason why I wanted to do it then, and I didn't explain this during the video, but I am extremely, extremely intimidated by Philadelphia Approach and that whole Philadelphia International Bravo airspace. It is very complicated. I'm near a major metropolitan uh, airport and I'm not gonna lie, uh, it, it worries a brother. So I wanted to do it so I could get over my nervousness of talking to Philadelphia Approach um, and operating in that airspace. And so that's why I particularly waited until I got closer to Pottstown because I knew at some point Harrisburg was gonna hand me off to Philadelphia and I was gonna have to be there um, to deal with Philadelphia, their approach, you know, um, and I, I knew I wasn't going to get into the Class Bravo airspace, but I knew that that was going to be an issue that I had to deal with. And so, yeah, so my training is going pretty good. Um, and it's, you know, going at a pace that I like. I get to determine uh, what my pace looks like. Now, I will say, and I got great advice, when I need to start, you know, shooting approaches and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to do some of that in the aircraft because you have to you know have some real world conditions of course and some of the hours that you have for ifr flight instruction has to be um dual so you know i will definitely do that but initially i got this great advice that once i start doing those approaches do it on a sim um it counts i will learn I and if i then if i miss an approach i can always reset the sim and you know go back as opposed to okay you gotta fly this big thing around and go back around so yeah once i start actually doing some of the flying the first thing that you're probably going to see if i'm allowed to show it and if not you know i'm going to be more mindful you know and respectful um, of the cfi's time and you know whether or not they want to you know be on camera and all that kind of stuff or even be heard but i'm hoping that i'll actually be able to do my stuff on the sim you'll see that and i'm definitely hoping that i can record some of that because one of the things that i have learned in my flight training is i know this youtube channel has been fun and i've met a lot of people but it's really helped me in my training because for me what i use it for primarily is i go back to my flight lessons and i really look at what i did during the course of that flight lesson and so i'm going to try to do the same thing when i'm doing my afr training like on the sim or in the airplane because i'm sure there's going to be things like um you know it's going to be like drinking from a water hose again and i already feel that and that's why i wanted to talk about you know what's going on in this video real quick and i want to show you what's going on because I gotta tell you, this IFR and instrument flight rules training is bananas. So let me show you a little bit of what's going on 
and I will, you know, and, and we'll and we'll talk about it. And then you guys, you know, as you see this, you might have some recommendations in terms of how best to take, you know, take this information in. Because I got to tell you, I feel like I'm like starting <laughs> from the beginning. Um, it's crazy. And you know, you would think that, you know, I'm thinking like, wait, I'm, am I not a pilot? Like, didn't I go through this stuff? And I got to tell you, I feel like I'm like starting right from the beginning. A lot of this nomenclature is different. I'm going to show you some of that. Um, there is acronyms galore, which is just nuts. And it's just, it's just crazy. So let me show you some of the stuff that like, I've actually been involved in um, with some of this ground school. One of the things I will say is before I show you what I've been studying and what I'm looking at, this time around, I wanna make sure I get my ground school and that written out of the way before I even get into the sim flying or getting into the airplane at all. One of the mistakes I think I made when I was doing my flight training the first time is I was trying to do both. And if you remember, if you don't, I'll put that video up. When I took the written the first time, I think I was too distracted and trying to do too many different things and wasn't studying appropriately. So I'm trying to learn how to fly and learn all the concepts. I actually failed my written the first time for my PPL. So I told myself that I'm not gonna make that same mistake this time. So I'm not gonna make that mistake this time. So this time what I'm gonna do is rather than trying to do everything at the same time, I wanna get the ground school tight, take my written, get that out of the way and then start doing the fly that way i will already have my written behind me and i will be able to go and start flight you know <laughs> standard turns and you know holds and all of that kind of stuff which seems absolutely impossible to me i don't understand all of that stuff it just makes my brain just feel like it's going to explode so rather than get into all of that that's what i want to do and get rid of all of that stuff and get rid of the written out of the way get the written out of the way and definitely be done with that so that's the plan having said that let me show you what's going on with some of these concepts it's crazy okay so a lot of this stuff starts off pretty tame you know it's all of the airspace and all this kind of stuff and i'm like oh, okay yeah no problem and then immediately the next page boom and it's just all of this stuff and things that i never even thought about like, look at this little symbol here. Altitude change. What is an MRA? This, what? 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 What is it? What's a mocha? I thought mocha was like chocolate or coffee or something like that. It's just crazy. And that's from that one page to the next. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here we go. So yeah, so that just starts some of this stuff and you know, there's high R navs, low R navs, Q routes. Uh, if there's a T in the prefix, that means something. I'm like, wait, what? I mean, like, I really feel like I'm literally starting from scratch, but it gets better. Check this out. So I remember seeing this airport legend before, but now there's these different things like an MEA, minimum in route altitude. Here's that mocha. Minimum obstruction clearance altitude. A M, not to be confused with a MRA or a minimum reception altitude. Not to be confused with a MAA or a maximum authorized altitude. And not to be confused with a MCA, the minimum crossing altitude. I'm like, and this is page six, chapter one. And it just, it just kind of went on and there's, different symbology and then I got here and I was just like time for a nap <laughs> I'm like oh my gosh what is all of this and I literally understood nothing on this page and for the most part I still don't understand anything on that page <laughs> yeah I mean it's crazy I mean and you can see all of this stuff is just the first chapter um it's crazy and you can see all i'm doing now is i'm just trying to understand both the symbology but what i'm really trying to understand here is all of the acronyms because those are important so 
you know, the air route traffic control centers or the ARTCCs. Um, but then also moving into this symbology where feather arrowhead, if the feather arrowhead is up versus the feather arrowhead is down, um, it's just crazy. And I found this interesting, Pine Bluff. Oh, Pine Bluff, here you go. If anybody knows about that, there's been a lot of people who have flown into that airport, but it's just crazy. And so, yes, you can see I changed up my location because there's some people getting over there and I didn't want to disturb. And I think I was making the baby cry. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that baby crying in the background. So I decided maybe I should come over here. Maybe I'm making the baby upset with all of these crazy concepts. It's like, baby, I understand. I feel like crying too. But yeah, as you can see, it's like, it really gets crazy with like these terminal procedures, the SIDS, um, standard instrument departure, standard terminal arrival routes um and like i said this is all just within the first chapter and it's just crazy and i figure like this i have to understand those acronyms because these are the types of things that are going to be in these charts so in looking at this rnav approach this gps approach from one way seven at a Orlando executive. As you can see, it's got this little symbol here. So that means it's a non-standard airport takeoff minimums. Um, and then this symbology here, alternative minimums not authorized. And then all of the different acronyms, right? The initial approach fix coming into here and then the final approach fix here coming into the airport here. And then this symbology meaning, I think the missed approach and then the hold over here. And this, this approach plate is actually relatively simple. Most people who are looking at approach plates, I mean, this is like very, very basic. And again, this is within the first chapter which is just crazy and so not only understanding this symbology here but understanding all of the different components of the different you know for pilot briefing the procedural notes um the plan view the profile here this information here and i can't say the word because if i say the word that's going to cut the camera off. I don't know why this stupid GoPro hears this word and it cuts off. Ridiculous. But then the minimums um, and, and and then this is the actual airport, airport diagram. And so as you can see, that's just a basic, basic ap approach plate. And for me, I mean, that is like really, really complicated and complex. So the one thing I will say is it is very confusing. It is very overwhelming. It, the, the amount of information in here is just crazy. So I will say the information in here is like very daunting. But the one thing that I will say is that I can remember the same feeling I had when I first started the ground school when I was studying for my PPL. It was completely overwhelming. I didn't think I was ever gonna learn this stuff. I'm thinking there's no way I'm gonna get my brain to be able to pack all of this stuff into it. And now there are things like the instruments. I know exactly what the six pack are. I know what all of them do. And so it's just a matter of, you know, getting used to all of the different components and being used to, um, you know, being exposed to that material. So I'm gonna approach it the same way I did when I was getting my PPL. I'm gonna, you know, basically like they say, eating an elephant one bite at a time. So I'm just gonna try to take my time with this material. And right now it is a lot. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm only working my, my way through the first few chapters. And, you know, let me show you this. They have these different procedures about, you know, how to land. So you got a teardrop procedure here. Um, you got the holding pattern in lieu of procedure turn and procedure turns. I mean, it just, you know, goes on and on. And even things like this FAF, um, what is that again? Oh, I remember, I gotta, <laughs> gotta find that acronym. But the final approach points not to 
be confused with the final approach fix. Um, I guess there's this big, you know, Maltese cross in the profile. So, you know, as you can see, it's just, it's just crazy. And again, this is all chapter one. Look at this. This is nuts. I mean, this is just crazy. So I will say hats off to all of you instrument rated pilots who have managed to cram all of this into your brains. I find this information to be absolutely daunting and just absolutely crazy. But like anything, I'm gonna take it one step at a time. Um, I'm gonna, you know, continue to study. The other thing that I think I'm gonna to try to do is probably either do sporties. I might do King Schools again because that's what I did for my ground school training and you know, some of the test questions and stuff for my written, for my private, I mean, for my PBL. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna to go to King Schools route. I know that I've been doing a lot of research and looking at sporties. They have a pretty decent looking program. So just something to run through. But the beauty of, of this whole thing is Yes, it's a lot. Yes, it's gonna be daunting, but I get to do this at my own pace. And so I don't have to worry about, you know, timelines or whatever. And one thing about getting an instrument rating, it doesn't stop me from flying. So I can keep flying and keep practicing, maybe even try to get into one of the IFR aircraft from Leading Edge um, and try to dial in some frequencies and see what happens to the instrumentation. So I got time, I'm not in any rush. Yes, I would like to get my instrument rating in calendar year 2023. So that's my goal. I said it here, you heard it right. I would like to be an instrument rated pilot by 2023. But if it doesn't happen by then, eh, I still get to fly. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it. I just want to do a quick video to update my whole IFR training. Uh, it's coming along, it's slowly but surely, it's on its own pace. My goal is to have my instrument rating by 2023. Um, and so that's why I'm not really pressed about it. I still got some time, but definitely want to start doing this ground school um, and get this, um, this uh, written out of the way. That is definitely going to be the goal. So yeah, working my way back to the office, hard. walking through Rittenhouse, Beautiful day down here in Philadelphia. If you're ever in the Philadelphia area, you definitely have to make your way down to Rittenhouse Square. It's a beautiful, beautiful park. Um, lots of shade. So no matter how hot it is, you can find some place to be comfortable in the shade. So any rate, just wanted to give you an update on the instrument. Um, I will be sharing the logo pretty soon. It is done. Got some merch cooking um, and because of the fact that you guys have been supporting me, I'm actually gonna even be able to do a merch sale. So definitely working on that. Hopefully that will be <laughs> my next and final Wednesday upload. I know I keep saying that because I keep saying I don't like to do these Wednesday uploads. And as you can see, you can see why, because I'm at work, I gotta get to the office and usually I have to be on public in front of a bunch of people. And it's just weird talking to yourself, holding this thing in <laughs> this little square box and talking to yourself. So thank you all for your support. And, um, you know, send me good vibes my way in terms of learning this instrument stuff. I'll definitely appreciate it. And uh, so that's pretty much it. So with that, I'm gonna leave the park, stop talking to myself, stop having people stare at me and um, stop being an idiot. <laughs> At any rate, thank you guys. Russ Kid, Russ Can Fly, I'm out. Peace. Oh yeah, like my fancy lunch bag. <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs>